Hey there people, how you doing? So, man, today's comparison. I gotta say, this is probably the most anticipated one, personally speaking, and I do know that a lot of people think the same, because if you really think about it, the OnePlus 9 Pro, it has some really good videography in there. It's not because it's, you know, the most consistent or the most perfect in terms of producing video. That's not really the case. Rather, it produces video with certain features such as 8K30 from main and ultra wide, really good 4K60 and 4K 120 even, that many other smartphones either can't do altogether or they don't really have a good implementation of it. Now this time is going up against the Mi 11 Ultra, which in my opinion has really good videography, but there are certain nuances that one must know when you're thinking about these two devices, especially in videography, because I haven't really seen much, but I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be real close. Okay, so we're kicking things off with selfie video as usual. Now, neither of these are particularly great in terms of selfie video, simply because both are stuck at 1080p, and so the overall details and quality is obviously not gonna be as good as many other flagships out there which can do 4K. But, obviously, if there are any differences in dynamic range colors between either of these two, I'll let you guys know in a moment. And as for audio, well, based on the previous camera comparisons and video comparisons that I've done, both for the Mi 11 Ultra and the OnePlus 9 Pro, I would say that it might be the Mi 11 that takes the lead. At least I'm guessing. I'm not entirely certain, uh, obviously. I'm not going to give any guarantees here, but let's see. I'll, I'll let you guys know in about a second or so. So, for a selfie video, you know what, I take it back. Honestly, I had not expected software updates to actually improve audio quality on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Because now, as you heard it right there, it does not really try to suppress background noise as much. And the voice is nice, it doesn't sound as muffled as it did before. So, that's really nice to see. The Mi 11 has great audio as you'd expect. And as for video quality, well, both are suffering from the resolution issue, but Overall, I like the Mi 11 Ultra. It's keeping the highlights better in check, handling the contrast a little bit better. And I also really like the colors there. It's very accurate and it just overall looks a little bit more appealing in my opinion. The OnePlus isn't bad, but the contrast is a bit too much for my liking. So moving on, we have 4K 30 here. And well, both are very similar if you ask me in terms of stabilization and even dynamic range looks good. I mean, it's not a very challenging situation to begin with, but even so, it looks really nice. But the colors and contrast, well, that's a very different story as you can see right here. The Mi 11 definitely looks more natural, but I gotta say I really like how the OnePlus looks here. It's not quite as natural as you'd expect, but it does have this extra bit of punch in the video, like, altogether, whether it's in the leaves or the road. Wherever you see, you get this extra bit of clarity that I personally appreciate a lot. And it's a very similar story on the ultra-wide cameras as well. Both of these are very similar, except for the colors and contrast, where once again the OnePlus goes for the very punchy look, which actually ends up giving us this perception of extra detail. And I'm not saying the Mi 11 Ultra has less sharpness overall. We'll get to detail soon. There's a details test coming up, but it's actually looking better in my opinion on the OnePlus. Now, both of these also come with HDR modes. These are not HDR 10 plus or anything like that just HDR, you know, to give us better dynamic range. Now, the Mi 11 kind of fulfills that. The OnePlus, to be honest, it looks very similar to how it did in the normal 4K30, so I'm not really sure what the dynamic HDR really means on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Anyways, we can actually use the ultra-wide camera here, which is a good thing, I guess. Now, of course, we gotta check out versatility. So on the Mi 11, we have the ultra-wide, the main camera, and the five times periscope zoom, which, by the way, can do 4K30. And that alone does give the Mi 11 a huge edge over the OnePlus 9 Pro because the OnePlus, as you'd notice, just like the Mi 11, it can do the ultra-wide and the main cameras, but it, it can't actually use the three times zoom that it has built in. So that really leads to a lot of degradation in quality, of, especially in video, because the three times zoom is actually 8 megapixel, which just does not really help out the OnePlus here because 8 megapixels is not enough for 4K. And now we have 4K60 on both of these. I gotta say, both are very impressive here. They're producing really detailed shots and 
honestly there is a bit more contrast on the oneplus 9 pro once again so it it almost looks like there's more detail on the oneplus because of the extra bit of clarity we have there but you know honestly it's not really like that the sharpness is very similar similar story for 4k60 on the ultra wide as well both look really good here and very nice and detailed honestly i have no complaints up until now i'd say both have a different look but the quality of video you can get out of these is phenomenal to say the very least but then we have 8k now i would say it's pretty similar i do think that the oneplus 9 pro has just a little bit better stabilization in certain cases a little bit more jerks are making it into the mi 11 but honestly it's not that big a deal where things do get kind of interesting is with Mi 11 Ultra having 8K on the ultra wide as well. This is the second device that I've ever used which actually supports 8K 30 on the ultra wide. Quite interesting. And yes, a details test for this one is coming real soon, so stay tuned for that. But generally speaking, both have really good stabilization here. It's one of the reasons I really like 8K on the ultra wide because you get the details of 8K and you also get the stabilization. And honestly, I feel like in some cases, the Mi 11 Ultra might just have a little bit better dynamic range, especially in like the highlight control. Up next was Super Steady. Now, this is where I think the OnePlus is kind of taking a lead because it can do 4K. It is using the ultra wide camera, but because it can actually shoot 4K Super Steady or Super Stable, however you want to call it, I think it takes an upper hand compared to the Mi 11 Ultra, which does look a little bit uh, over sharpened and to be honest, I think stabilization is actually better on the OnePlus 9 Pro simply because it's using the ultra-wide cameras. Now speaking of, the Mi 11 Ultra can also use the ultra-wide cameras here, which is definitely nice to have the option, but I really wish we could do 4K because although the Mi 11 Ultra does have really good stabilization with the ultra-wide and it has a wider field of view here, I still think the OnePlus 9 Pro pulls ahead in terms of overall usability simply because of just how high the video quality can get with 4K. Moving on, we have a good old Valentine in front of the backlight. And I once again really like the OnePlus 9 Pro because of the extra bit of contrast. You'll notice that it's not actually blowing things out, not too much at least, but compared to the Mi 11 Ultra, it's definitely like edging out at the limits of dynamic range. Like the highlights are just barely under control, while the Mi 11 looks a bit flat in my opinion. But that extra bit of contrast really helps out in making the video look really nice. Now the Mi 11 Ultra also has a big problem in focusing, especially when it comes to Valentine, you know? Even with small movements, the Mi 11 Ultra just suffers with accuracy, speed, whatever. The OnePlus isn't like the best in focusing, but I do think it is better compared to the Mi 11 Ultra. At least it tries to focus. It might be a little bit slow, but the accuracy is definitely better than the Mi 11. Up next for the ultra wide in similar conditions and here you'll notice that once again that high contrast on the oneplus looks really nice like i i honestly vastly prefer the oneplus here the focusing problem is pretty much gone because the ultra wide on the mi 11 can actually handle focusing on valentine but damn it looks really faded on the mi 11 here if you ask me honestly any day, I'd pick the OnePlus 9 Pro here simply because of just how punchy everything looks. Now moving on to low light video, well, here I'd say neither are particularly great because they have a focusing issue. The OnePlus gets slower, while the Mi 11 Ultra it loses out on accuracy and speed even more than before, so that's obviously not good news. Now overall, I once again think that the OnePlus suits my tastes. I think here both are very much similar considering the contrast here. The OnePlus obviously has it higher compared to the Mi 11, but I would understand why one would want to go for the Mi 11's flatter look. But yeah, once again, there is a focusing issue and there is some smearing going on on the OnePlus as well. Then we have the ultra wide camera and here I think now the OnePlus is actually doing really well. It's focusing well enough, it's got a lot of detail. Part of it must be thanks to the higher contrast, but even so, like the overall sharpness in Valentine's feathers is quite visible and I really like it. There is a lot of vibrance on the OnePlus as well. If you look at the blue in the background, it is saturated. <laughs> But to be honest, the Mi 11 Ultra isn't all that bad. It is a bit flat, obviously. And focusing also looks really nice here. So overall, I'd say it's pretty much a tie. 
Now for arguably the interesting part of the video, we have the details test starting with 4K30. Now zooming right in, you can see there is really not much difference. Yes, the OnePlus does have the higher contrast which might lead someone to believe that it has higher detail. That's not a bad thing but in, in reality, the raw detail that you can actually get is very similar across the board. And the higher contrast actually has its downsides as well. You can see the Mi 11 is actually controlling highlights better compared to the OnePlus here. But unfortunately, I can't really say the same for the ultra wide camera because the moment we zoom in, I think it's pretty obvious that the OnePlus 9 Pro just has a good bit more sharpening going on. Now, that's not a bad thing to be honest because the Mi 11 Ultra looks really soft here. I mean, sure, it has zero over sharpening artifacts, which is sort of a good thing, but I mean, uh, I would really like a little bit more sharpening. I really like the OnePlus here. Their video overall does look a good bit more detailed compared to the Mi 11 Ultra. You add in the contrast, the clarity, and then the sharpening that we get, the details are definitely pulling ahead on the OnePlus, especially on the ultra wide. But on 8K, guess what? Things are actually turning around because now the Mi 11 Ultra has more sharpness. It's, it's not the biggest difference, not nearly as much as we saw on the ultra wide, but there is definitely a difference here. We can definitely see more texture detail on the Mi 11 Ultra compared to the OnePlus 9 Pro. But then for the ultra wide cameras, well, I think the OnePlus 9 Pro takes a small lead. It's not as drastic a difference as we saw for the 4K 30 ultra wide video, simply because 8K already nets in so much more detail compared to 4K that too much over sharpening is not really needed but having a little bit like on the oneplus 9 pro i think it makes a difference uh, i personally like how the oneplus looks here and because it's 8k you know what i just feel like we should get the maximum possible detail we can from the ultra wide cameras in particular because those just tend to be soft in general now some might prefer the mi 11 ultra's look i know that for sure but my preference goes to the oneplus here but i'll tell you what in night mode time lapse it does not because now to be fair, neither of these have night mode time lapse, but what makes a Mi 11 about a billion times better here are the manual controls we get in time lapse. So with the pro controls, I cranked up the exposure time to something around, uh, I believe it was 0.3 or 0.4 seconds, and that was enough to give us way higher quality video. Now granted, night mode time lapse would actually give you better highlight control as well, but as you can see that's not really happening we are blowing out some highlights on the mi 11 ultra but definitely it is a lot better than the oneplus where i don't even know why what the oneplus is doing right there up next we have slow motion this 10 tp240 on both and for some very odd reason oneplus decided to overexpose here i have genuinely never seen any smartphone much less a oneplus 9 pro any smartphone so far overexpose in slow motion video because you know it's indoors no matter how much light i shine on it it's obviously not going to replace daylight slow motion so yeah I'm, I'm genuinely surprised what also surprises me here is that there is very little difference if any at all in noise levels compared to the mi 11 ultra because somehow the oneplus 9 pro even after overexposing doesn't really seem to have any issues with noise that generally surprises me but of course considering everything i do think the mi 11 is doing a better job it is handling the situation better but that's not all though because the mi 11 ultra can also pull off 1080p 1920 fps now as impressive as that number might sound, it's actually not all that useful because of just how tight the timing is for the slow motion and also because like that much slow, I honestly don't see much use case for it. The OnePlus on the other hand, it cannot go that slow but it can do 4K 120 which personally speaking at least I know for a fact is way more useful because I can use 4K 120 for numerous situations where 1080p 240 is not actually needed much less 1920 fps which is why i think 4k 120 on the oneplus is the right way to go if you really want to improve on slow motion and as you can see it looks ridiculously good on the oneplus here but of course the oneplus also managed to overexpose in the middle of the video even after i'd drawn the exposure down honestly i don't know why it's doing that it's a it's weird i tried slow motion after this as well and then it didn't seem to overexpose so I don't know what happened in this case in particular is the reason I'm showing you this one. But anyways, that's a wrap for the comparison and well, I gotta say, the OnePlus 9 Pro was a tough competitor for the Mi 11 Ultra as you'd expect and it was very close. 
The only real difference between the two boils down to the colors and contrast which look you prefer and obviously there are differences in details but to be honest in in the big picture it's it's not gonna matter too much but the look of the videos you're gonna get is gonna be very different now in this case at least as much as i like the oneplus 9 pro and its punchy look it's definitely something i like to see a lot but you know, if, if I had to pick one and just not look back, I would go for the Mi 11 Ultra because I can add contrast whenever I want. But getting a flat video can quite often help a dynamic range, especially in tricky situations. So with that said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, do hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be seeing you guys later. Cheers.